or it is present uh, the fruits are formed only in the plants with ovary in the flower ovary in the flower that means the plants which are having the ovary in their flowers though those plants only <coughs> those plants only produce the fruits so actually there are two types of flowering plants are there as we know that is gymnosperms and angiosperms okay in gymnosperms ov ovules are produced but ovary is not present in the flower whereas in the angiosperms in the angiosperm ovules are present and ovary is also present after fertilization that is post fertilization change after fertilization process what happens the ovules are converted into seeds and ovary is converted into fruit that means the formation of a fruit is the unique character present only in the angiosperms it is a unique character unique means it is the special character which is present only in the angiosperms but not in the other plants so don't get confused with the with this statement because in the textbook it is given as it is a characteristic feature of flowering plants but it is not the characteristic feature of all flowering plants but in that only one group of flowering plants will produce the fruits that group is called as a angiosperms okay as a result of a fertilization process the ovules are converted into seeds and ovary is converted into fruit and the fruit is enclosing the seeds or we can say that seeds are enveloped by the wall by the fruit wall and every fruit every fruit will have mainly two parts those are seeds and the fruit wall seeds and the fruit wall and generally as i am saying that after fertilization after fertilization or as a result of post fertilization change the fruit formation is taking place but there are some cases where parthenocorpic fruit formation is present what do you mean by this parthenocorpic fruit means generally in some plants the fruits are formed without fertilization fruits are formed without fertilization process so if fertilization does not take place how does the fruit is formed so because already I, i told you that ovary after fertilization it is converted into fruit but in parthenocorpic fruit if the fertilization is not taking place how come the fruit is formed means here the fruit may be formed from uh, different tissues of the ovary different tissues of the ovary or the ovule sometimes the diploid egg so generally egg excel will be haploid but in some cases the excel will be diploid that may be converted into fruit or sometimes the different uh, tissues of the uh, female structures may be converted into fruit without fertilization process and here the fruit which is formed as a result of parthenocarpy will also be diploid in condition why because as a egg is diploid so it is likely divided to form into fruit which is diploid in condition such type of fruits are called as a parthenocorpic fruits and as a egg is directly converted into fruit so no seed formation that means the parthenocorpic seeds does not have parthenocorpic fruits does not have the seeds or we can call them as seed less fruits these are seed less fruits so this is most commonly seen in examples like in banana and in some grape varieties and of course nowadays uh, in some watermelon also 
this type of uh, seedless fruit formation can be seen. So this is an exceptional case where uh, <coughs> the bypassing of the fertilization process. Bypassing means it is not taking place. By, 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 by bypassing of the fertilization process, the fruit formation can be seen. Such type of fruits are called as parthenocarpic fruits. Then generally, let us take the Generally, fruits have two parts. One is called as a seeds and second part is called as a fruit wall. Technically, fruit wall is known with a word called as pericarp. Technically, it is called as pericarp. Okay, seeds number may be ranging from one to many. So depending upon the number of ovules present in the ovary, for example, if the if a ovary contains one ovule, the fruit which is formed from that ovary contains only one seed. If the ovules present in the ovary, if ovules are many in number in that ovary, the fruit that have been formed from such ovary may contain many seeds. And uh, here generally pericarp have three regions or three, differentiated into three parts. Those are called as Epicarp, mesocarp, and endocarp. Epicarp means the outer, outermost layers of the pericarp. Mesocarp means the middle layers of the meso, uh, middle layers of the pericarp, and the inner layers are inner wall, outer wall middle wall and the inner wall so likewise the differentiation can be seen in the pericarp when the pericarp is fleshy in its nature okay then let us come to the types of fruits so as we have said that uh, uh, fruit is developing from the ovary sometimes <clears throat> okay it may not take place so depending upon the condition there are two types of fruits are there true fruit and false fruit. So we can call it as pseudo fruit also. <clears throat> so what is a true fruit means? The, the, the perfect definition of a fruit. That is the fruit which develops from the fruit which develops from ovary is called as a true fruit. The fruit which develops from ovary is called as a true fruit. Whereas here, the fruit which develops from any other part of the ovary or any other part of the flower, not ovary, any other part of the flower along with the Ovary. So here it is very much clear that uh, not only the ovary, that is, ovary is also forming into fruit, and other part of the flower is converted into fruit. So, how come it is possible? Means so here in false fruit, ovary is converted, is forming into whenever we are saying that it is ovary is converted into fruit, means that fruit is a true fruit in general. True fruit part will be present. And uh, other floral parts, they will give rise to false fruit part. So that means a false fruit will contain both the parts. True fruit part is present and also the false fruit part will be present. It is not like, don't, don't get confused with this statement. Because sometimes in the question, uh, they may ask that uh, false fruit contains only false fruit part, only true fruit part, neither of them and both of them. So the answer will be both of them because uh, in false fruit, ovary will also contribute for the formation of the fruit along with the other floral parts. So let us take some of the examples of um, false fruit here itself. So as we said that other floral parts are giving rise to the fruit more, uh, give rise to the false fruit. No? So here, let us take the examples where other floral parts are giving rise to the fruit. 
for example in apple the thalamus forms or develops into false fruit and uh, in cashew nut the pedicel of the flower develops into juicy false fruit juicy and fleshy juicy and fleshy false fruit whereas in the other examples like strawberry here the receptacle or the thalamus receptacle or the thalamus develops into false fruit so likewise these are the three examples where the false fruit formation can be seen it is not like that these fruits have only false fruit part but they have the true fruit part also okay so these are the variations that can be seen in the plants with the false fruit and the true fruit now let us come to the true fruit so we know that uh, true fruit is a original fruit we can consider because it is developing from the ovary after fertilization process okay as a result of post fertilization change as a result of post fertilization change here uh, ovary will be converted into fruit it is what we call it as a true fruit okay then <clears throat> there is a lot of variation present in the true fruits they are basically divided into two types one is those are called as fleshy fruits and uh, dry fruits fleshy fruits and the uh, dry fruits so what is the difference between fleshy fruits and dry fruits the common feature is both of them are developing from the ovary itself but the difference is the fleshy fruits have fleshy pericarp a fleshy in sense it is thick also uh, it is uh, differentiated into three regions fleshy pericarp is present fleshy pericarp which is divisible into three regions so what are the three regions which already we had discussed here epicarp mesocarp and the endocarp into three regions epi meso and endocarps whereas dry fruits will have the dry pericarp where we cannot differentiate them into three regions dry pericarp which is not divisible into epi meso and endocarps that is the difference between dry fruit and the fleshy fruits of the true fruits okay so that is the way how they have been differentiated here now let us start with the types of fleshy fruits so basically depending upon uh, the nature of the uh, pericarp so they have been differentiated into five types there are five types of fleshy fruits are there starting with the first one <clears throat> droop fruit so droop fruit is the one which is developing from monocarpellary develop from monocarpellary unilocular superior ovary unilocular ganesium of superior ovary
and uh, the speciality of this uh, drew fruit is it also have uh, the three regions general character but the special feature is it have stony endocarp it is a unique feature stony endocarp is a special feature present in the drew fruit and these are generally single seeded single seeded fleshy fruit means group round single seeded fleshy fruit means group and it have the stony endocarp in it so there are two examples are there uh, <clears throat> one is mango and other is uh, coconut that is cocos nucifera uh, let us see the character present in the in uh, epicarp mesocarp and uh, endocarp of these three so here <clears throat> in mango the epicarp is thin and membranous whereas in coconut also it is thin and membranous whereas in mango mesocarp is fleshy and edible whereas in coconut the mesocarp is fibrous it is not edible and endocarp is stony and hard in both of them that is both of them are belonging to <clears throat> group only but the difference is there in the nature of the mesocarp where in mango it is fleshy and edible that is what the part the part of the mango that we eat is uh, the mesocarp whereas in coconut the fibrous it is mesocarp is fibrous and not edible but which part of coconut is edible means inside the hard and stony endocarp we can see the presence of endosperm and two types of endosperms are present in the coconut one is solid endosperm that is what the copra that we eat and the liquid endosperm that is the coconut milk these two are edible parts the copra that we eat is a solid endosperm and the liquid endosperm is nothing but the coconut milk so that is the difference that we can see in the mango and the coconut and if you see the diagram of uh, both of them in the center it have hard endocarp and this is a epicarp mesocarp fleshy part and endocarp and uh, in mango also in mango this type of characters can be seen whereas in coconut so this is a epicarp mesocarp and endocarp and inside this endocarp we can see the presence of the endosperm which is edible in nature so this is mango and this is <clears throat> coconut and that is a characteristic feature present in the first fruit called as a group and second one is called as berry fruit berry fruit develops from bi to multi carpellary gynoecium with superior ovary with superior ovary so here depending upon the number of carpel the loculus number will all be will also be same that is if the berry fruit is developing from bi carpellary ovary the loculus number will be 2 if it is developing from multi carpellary ovary the number of carpels will be many so that is the number of loculus the number of carpels will be equal to number of carpels here and the ovary will be superior ovary and here the characteristic feature uh, uh, the character the other characters related to the berry fruit is they have many seeds in them and seeds are the hard parts which are present in them the hardest part present in the berry fruit or the seeds and uh, in these fruits in these berry fruits they have mesocarp endocarp and uh, <clears throat> epicarp epicarp is uppermost part 
whereas here the main character is related with the mesocor and endocor both of them are fused to form a pulp like structure and all the seeds the hardest part that we have said no all the seeds are embedded inside the pulp like structure okay so this type of characters can be seen in examples like brinjal tomato grapes and guava and of course chilies will also show this type of characteristic features so here <coughs> mesocarp is uh, leathery in its nature mesocarp is leathery in its nature so this type of characters can be seen in the berry fruit where so this is epicarp we cannot differentiate the mesocarp and endocarp so because they have been fused so undifferentiated we can say pulpy form is no undifferentiated meso and endocarp so like this inside which we can see many seeds so this is a pulp and these are the seeds so this type of character can be seen in the berry fruit and the third one is a taco fruit the pepo fruit develop from tricarpellary and unilocular organism tricarpellary unilocular organism here three corpels are there but only one locule is present due to incomplete formation of the corpels and it is developing from the Okay, this type of character can be seen where tricarpellary unilocular and uh, unilocular ovary, and uh, the ovary from which is it is developing is inferior ovary. Here, <clears throat> epicarp is little bit hard, hard, and called as rind, called as rind. whereas here the other structures like uh, mesocarp is fleshy and uh, endocarp is smooth okay if you take the section uh, uh, section of the paper fruit we can see the presence of seeds like this so here the placenta will be there and this is a epicarp which is hard and uh, rind like and this part is a fleshy part called as mesocarp and inner part is a smooth part called as a endocarp and these are the seeds many seeds are present in this fruit so the most important characteristic is it is developing from tricarpellary unilocular gynoecium with inferior ovary with a hard epicarp that is called as a rind then next one is hesperidium Hesperidium is a fruit which is developing from multicarpellary, multilocular, and 
mechanism with superior overing. And it have three parts, epicarp, which is little leathery in its nature. And uh, <coughs> mesocarp is thin and peppery. Is peppery. And uh, endocarp contains generally some sort of uh, juicy haze are present. So bears the juicy haze contain juicy hairs in it. And on this leathery epicot, they have volatile oil glands. And if you if any time observe the <clears throat> epicorp of uh, citrus fruits. So examples for this one is a uh, citrus fruits like lemon. And uh, if you press that epicot part, so some sort of oily structure, oily matter will be coming out. That is nothing but the, that is coming from the oil, uh, oily, volatile oily glands, which are present in the epicarp region. Then coming to the diagrammatic representation. So if you see the picture of uh, asperidium, So this is the epicarp, which is leathery in its nature. Just below the epicarp, or inner side to epicarp, we can see white paper-like structure that is mesocarp. And this part, the empty space is present called as endocarp. And in these empty spaces, we can see the presence of juicy hairs. And along with the juicy hairs, in the center, we can see the presence of seeds. So these are the seeds. So these are the juicy hairs. And these are the seeds. The seeds are present in uh, axial placentation. So examples for Pepo, Ucurbitaceae family, that is Cucumber. Whereas examples for uh, citrus is uh, <clears throat> root AC family, that is citrus species. Root AC family. That is citrus species like lemon. Then coming to the last one in the freshy fruits, that is uh, pom. So pom is a fruit which develops from by, by to multicarpillary gynecium. Develop from by to multicarpillary gynecium with the inferior ovary. Inferior ovary. So here in berry fruits there are uh, five types. No, sorry. In, in fleshy fruits there are five types. No, also are the five types. The two types, two two fruits that are developing from uh, inferior ovary. One is the pepper fruit and other one is a pom fruit okay so from pom fruit as we said that it is developing from bicarpillary to multicarpillary in uh, uh, gynecium with inferior ovary and here the pro pom fruit uh, can be seen in examples like in apple examples like in apple if you see the diagram of apple uh, section of the apple fruit So this, this part is the fleshy thalamus. Thalamus is nothing but the false fruit. And inside this, we can see a membrane here. 
if we eat that uh, if you eat the uh, apple we can see inside a membrane like structure the, inside the membrane the part is a true float part and the inside which we can see many seeds also so that means here true fruit part is enclosed by false fruit part true fruit part is surrounded by false fruit part in apple Okay. So this type of characters can be seen in the foam fruit. So these are five types of fleshy fruits, starting with the droop, pepper, asparidium, berry, and foam. Then coming to the second type of uh, true fruits, those are dry fruits. dry fruits are those which have indivisible or uh, undifferentiable pericarp so the pericarp is dry and uh, not divisible into epi miso and endocarps and here <clears throat> when the dry fruits are not divisible into three parts we cannot say which part is epicarp which part is mesocarp and which part, which part is the endocarp so here these are non fleshy in their nature pericarp is hard means pericarp is dry means pericarp is non fleshy then uh, depending upon the pattern of uh, releasing of seeds from the fruit so they are divisible into dry dehiscent fruits <clears throat> dry indehiscent fruits and schizocarpic fruits okay dry dehiscent means dehiscent means breaking so that means when the pericarp become matured or older or uh, when it, whenever it is ready to release the pollen grain or when it, whenever it is really re, whenever the fruit is ready to release the seeds at that time thus the pericarp will become broken or pericarp will undergo dehiscence <clears throat> okay so and release the seeds okay let us start with the first one dry dehiscent fruits okay so here when the fruit is matured the pericarp disintegrates and breaks or dehisces to release seeds from the fruit that is a characteristic feature of the dry dehiscent fruits so further let us see different types of dry dehiscent fruits depending upon which manner they are dehiscing okay so starting with the first one legume fruits so these are otherwise called as pods also pod fruits are the legume fruits these are the fruits which are seen in the members of leguminaceae family or fabaceae family characteristic feature of the members belong into leguminaceae are the fabaceae family and these fruits develop from monocarpellary 
unilocular gynesium with the superior ovary. Here, if you see the structure of this uh, fruit, <clears throat> the pericarp will break along two lines. So those two lines are called as dorsiventral sutures. Break along dorsiventral sutures into two pieces. So it is breaking along this side and along this side also. So that uh, whenever it is broken, So this type of structure will be formed. So some seeds will remain attached to one side and uh, in some to the other side, like this. So it is breaking along dorsal suture and the ventral suture. So we can see the breaking into two pieces, okay, where some seeds are attached to one side and uh, some, seeds, some seeds are attached to one, one, one half and uh, some seeds are attached to other half. This type of breaking can be seen in the legume fruits, which is developing from monocorpulary, unilocular, and superior ovary. <clears throat> then coming to the second one, that is capsule. Capsule is a fruit which develops from by two multi-carpillary. Okay, if the corpels are two, the locules may also be two. If the corpels are many, locules may also be many. And uh, they may develop either from superior ovary, sometimes from inferior ovary also. Mostly from superior ovary only. Develop from by two multicarpillary, uh, by two multilocular gynesium with superior ovary, and the the dehiscence pattern will be different in the capsules. So depending upon in which manner they had dehiscing, so they are further differentiated into <coughs> septicidal, loculicidal. septifragal and porous capsule. Septicidal, that is we know that uh, in the ovary or uh, uh, in the flower part, we know that ovary will be present and ovary will have the septas. Like if you take the section, The inner wall. So this is a septa. Okay. Septicidal means the fruit breaks along the septas, like this, along the septas. So that entire locule will be separated into a piece. So whatever the number. Okay, here, whatever the number of locules are present, it is broken into number of seeds, okay? So here, the fruit or uh, the pericarp 
breaks along the septas breaks along the septas this type of character can be seen in examples like in cotton loculicidal so in the loculicidal so this part is locule look at this part so the between the two septas whatever the empty space that is called that is there that is called as uh, locule or we can call that call it as ovarian cavity okay consider this as the ovary here the breaking in the earlier example in the earlier type the septicidal the breaking of the fruit is taking place along the septas but here it is taking place along the locule so this is a locule so through the locule it is breaking so here through this locule it is breaking and through the locule it is breaking so that some part of the locule of one some part of locule of one ovarian cavity some part of locule of adjacent ovarian cavity will be separated out along with the septas so that is the pericarp break along the locules so such so type of uh, capsule is called loculicidal capsule generally loculicidal capsule can be seen in members belonging to liliaceae family liliaceae family and septifragal septifragal is a characteristic feature that can be seen in examples like in datura where the dehiscence of pericarp may occur either through septa or through locule so any one any type either through the septa or locule it is not confirmed that it, it will be taking place the breaking is taking place only through septa or not only through the locule it may take place through septa or the locule such type of uh, <clears throat> capsule is called a septifragal capsule can be seen in examples like in datura then porous capsule is also there porous capsule can be seen in examples like in poppy opium poppy in which uh, a small pore will be formed through that pore so uh, uh, otherwise the uh, predetermined pores will be there predetermined pores will be there through that predetermined pores the seeds will be liberated outside like this so these are the predetermined pores so through the pores the seeds are liberated outside so such type of capsules are called as uh porous capsules can be seen in opium poppy so likewise the capsules are differentiated into different types depending upon in which manner they are dividing the in which manner does the pericarp is divided and uh, seeds are liberated outside okay then coming to the dry indehiscent fruits so these are the fruits which does not undergo disintegration okay so they does not undergo disintegration or simply to say they does not break they does not break okay <laughs> Uh, does not undergo breaking better to say does not undergo dehiscence but how does they will be liberating the seeds so here when the fruit matures whenever the fruit get matures so what happens the complete complete uh, uh, reduction or disintegration of the pericarp will be taking place and liberating the seeds this type of character can be seen in the dry indehiscent fruits let us take the example uh, types of dry indehiscent fruits and most of the dry indehiscent 
almost all of the dry intestine fruits are single seeded fruits all of them are single seeded fruits okay. <clears throat> let us take the different types belonging to this one there are three types are there one is caryopsis caryopsis is the characteristic feature can be seen in grasses family or grass family like in uh, like uh, the member the family is called as poiesi family or gramine family so here examples like in rice we can see this type of character so here this caryopsis will develop from monocorpulary unilocular gynecium with superior ovary or sometimes uh, they, it may develop from inferior ovary also but mostly it is developing from the superior ovary only developing from the superior ovary mostly okay so here the special feature of the caryopsis is the seed coat and the fruit wall the fruit wall is nothing but pericarp or fused or these are inseparable in so it, it is not easy to separate uh, the pericarp from the top of the fruit wall pericarp from the top of the fruit wall that is inseparable we call it as okay and uh, <clears throat> here in the fruits like rice or caryopsis fruit the thing is uh, it have a special type of uh, layer that is called as aluron layer which is protein rich layer which is separating embryo from endosperm generally embryo will occupy or uh, is pushed into one corner and occupying little space most of the space is occupied by the endosperm only okay so if you see the diagram so this part will be the embryo and this part will be the endosperm and this one is the aluron layer which is separating the endosperm from the top of the embryo okay then coming to the next one that is the nut nut is a fruit which is developing from mono uh, which is developing from multicorpulary in corpus mostly inferior ovary multicorpulary <clears throat> multilocular syncarpus and mostly from the inferior ovary sometimes from the superior ovary also from the superior ovary also here the speciality of the nut is here the pericarp is the hardest part the pericarp is hardest part and which is stony in its nature and what is the difference between the nut and the caryopsis is here in the caryopsis as we said that uh, the fruit wall and seed coat are completely fused and they are inseparable but here they are free free in sense they are separable the pericarp and the seed coat are separable in the nut and this can be seen in examples like in cashew nut cashew nut 
and in the cashew nut we know that it have the flesh it, it have the fleshy part which is uh, uh, developing from the what do you call the uh, pedicel which is uh, juicy in its nature and apart from that one so it have the hardest part it is a true fruit part and it is a false fruit part which is developing from pedicel and uh, it is juicy in its nature that type of characters can be seen in the nut then then coming to the next one that is sipsella sipsella is the one which is developing from bicarpillary unilocular gynecium with the inferior ovary inferior ovary here sipsella is a characteristic uh, characteristic uh, fruit present in asteraceae family members asteraceae family members in this members uh, they have some special features we had already said that uh, 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 highly developed type of uh, inflorescence is present called as capitulum or head inflorescence and if you observe the nature uh, character of the sipsella fruit you might had observed that uh, some white cottony materials which are flying in the air so those uh, if you had observed the in lower part of the cottony material they have some brownish darkish brown color small structure will be present that is nothing but the sipsella fruit and uh, above that one white uh, cottony material is present no that is nothing but the persistent calyx persistent calyx means the calyx which remains with the fruit also so the the technical it is known as pappus cottony hair like structures are present above the sipsella fruit called as uh, is nothing but modified calyx that is persistent calyx called as pappus and uh, which helps in the pappus will help in parachute mechanism that is uh, it is helping in uh, uh, <coughs> blowing off the sipsella fruit from, from one a, one area to the other area uh, other area help in parachute mechanism and helping in uh, dispersal of the seed or dispersal of the fruit from one area to the other area so this type of characters can be seen in the sipsella fruit and one more thing here all the dry indecent fruits we said that single seeded fruits okay they have only one seed inside them so these are the three different types of dry indecent fruits caryopsis nut and sipsella then coming to the the next type of uh, fruits those are called as schizocorpic fruits schizocorpic fruits are the one which are showing the characters of both both uh, decent fruits and the in dehiscent fruits so in the dehiscent fruits we said that uh, when the fruit is matured the pericarp will undergo disintegration and break to release the seeds but in the in the indehiscent fruits the pericarp does not break okay so here it is showing both the characters that is initially uh, the fruit breaks into small single seeded bits these small single seeded bits are called as mericops these are called as a mericops called as mericops and uh, uh, let us see the uh, picture of this one so this can be seen in examples like in uh, castor and acacia here the fruit will be like this with the big depressions in between the seeds
So these are inside which we, we can see the presence of the seeds. Okay, so wherever the notches are present, so at that part, they will be broken. And they are separated out. And they are separated as single seeded bits like this. So that means here, the breaking is taking place. So as the breaking, breaking of the pericarp is taking place, we consider it as a characteristic feature of a dehiscent fruit. And, uh, and we call individual parts as mericops, no? And when does the seed is liberated from this mericops means? when uh, mericorp wall disintegrates when the mericorp wall disintegrate and it will release the seeds so that is uh, disintegration is a characteristic feature. Disintegration is a characteristic feature. That is, uh, the seeds are liberated only after disintegration of the mericop. So that is a characteristic feature of the dry indehiscent fruits. So chaijokar fruit is showing the characters of both dry dehiscent fruits and the dry indehiscent fruits. Then coming to the uh, two other type of fruits are those. Those are called as aggregate fruits. Aggregate fruits are the one which develop from develop from from ovaries of apocorpus ovary or apocorpus uh, carpel. So epocorpus means all the carpels are free, okay? And each carpel develops into small fruitlet, develop into small fruit. So those small fruits are called as fruitlets. Those small fruits are called as fruitlets and all the fruitlets, all the fruitlets are Arranged compactly on the same thalamus. Arranged compactly on the thalamus. So as they have compactly arranged, we call it as an aggregate fruit. So here, what is the difference between the normal uh, uh, fleshy fruits and uh, aggregate fruit means? Fleshy fruits are developing from syncarpus ovary, that is fused carpels of a flower, whereas aggregate fruits are developing from the Three carpels are epocorpus ovary, where each carpel is developing into a small fruitlet, and all the fruitlets are aggregated or compactly arranged on the same thalamus. So this type of fruits are called as aggregate fruits. And here, this type of aggregate fruits can be seen in the custard apple, that is in Anonas mimosa plant. And in Anonas mimosa, we know that uh, uh, if you open the fruit, we can see a uh, single seeded bits. And each single seeded bit is nothing but a fruitlets. And all of them are arranged on the same thalamus. So like the thalamus will be elongated in that one, like this. 